There's a passage that holds a wealth of truth found in 2 Kings 8. Tonight I want to look into it for the main purpose of our being in church tonight. Is that right? God's Word being that main purpose. 2 Kings 8 and verse 4. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha have done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Lord, I thank you tonight that we have come back into the land. Yea, we have returned unto the fold. We have joined together once more in your house. We have left those hog pens of iniquity. We have left the muddy sea of sin. We've left the very fields of transgression. Lord, we have come out of Egypt now, for the famine has been so great that even there we cannot share. All bring us out of the world, for that is what Egypt is a type of. And bring us into a brand new place here in Canaan's land where milk and honey flow, grapes of Esco grow. As a matter of fact, restore unto us that which is ours. Give us now a year of jubilee. May we rejoice over the fruits of our labor, and though we have lost much since we've been departed, return unto us good measure shaken down, pressed together and running over. Give us restoration, revival, we ask. The mighty name of the Lord is done. Aren't you glad you've come back to get all you can and can all you get? Now tonight, I know that the Lord is going to feed her soul. It always happens this way when there's not too many uh, star folks around. Those folks that uh, have already been feeding on the Word of God are going to get a balanced diet. What God gives you tonight will give you something for your own good. Praise the Lord. So I love him, don't you? Elisha was the double portion prophet. One day he asked Elijah, said, partner, I don't want much. I want just uh, twice as much as what you got. Well, that's a hard saying, but if you see me when I go to heaven, you can have it. Have you seen Jesus as he went to heaven? Let us look at it again. We're in Acts 1 on the Mount of Olives, and suddenly he uh, ascends within our sight, and we watch him disappear into a cloud. Therefore, you'll have to reappear in a cloud. He left the Mount of Olives when his foot last touched this earth, therefore his foot will have to touch the Mount of Olives when it again touches this earth. For those angels said, This same Jesus, as you've seen taken up from you, shall so come again in like manner as you see him go into heaven. Exactly, precisely, by detail, the same. Amen. Some said, well, he came in this form in 1902, and that form in 1837, and some other form in 1702. Nine. No, when he comes, he'll come exactly as he left. He that come in the flesh, and how many agrees that Jesus has come in the flesh, that is the Spirit of God, not the Spirit of Antichrist. I'll go you one further. He not only came in the flesh, he's coming again in the flesh, the glorified flesh and bone body wherewith he left. The same Jesus shall so come again in like manner, the same way that he left before he will return. Thank God. So Elisha saw Elijah when he went in the exact detail how beautiful it was when he cried, My father, my father, the horsemen of Israel and the chariot thereof. But now Elisha waited for the mantle to fall because this was the promise. Some folks never wait on God. Therefore, they never receive the promise. But that doesn't mean the promise is not for you and unto your children and your children's children and as many as were far off, as many as whom the Lord our God shall call. 
Matter of fact, the promise of God is yea and amen to him that will believe. Every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, and every line. Most people love to sing standing on the promises, but all you ever catch them doing is sitting on the premises. Hallelujah. That's right. And the same folks that sing where he leads me, I'll follow, never sing what he feeds me, I'll swallow. But tonight you swallow what you fed because it will help you to claim the promise. Elisha waited and the mantle fell. When it hit him on the shoulder, he said, that's the same feeling I felt in the beginning when I was out plowing as a rich farmer with 12 yoke of oxen. But I burnt the oxen and every bridge behind me and I followed this thing till I got it. All tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye are endured from power from on high. All the, uh, not for you to know, said Jesus, the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and not before. And if you tarry in Jerusalem, ye shall receive the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He didn't say many years hence. Most folks wait for years, but for not many days hence they receive Pentecost. Now, Elisha said, if it worked for Elijah, it'll work for me. He touched the Jordan, and it parted. God is no respecter of persons. And there wasn't anything real special, I, d I don't think, about the cloth and that mantle, but the faith in that man. Say, praise the Lord. And when he walked dry shod, not only was that a witness to him, but it was also a confirmation when the sons of the prophets in Jericho saw him coming, saying, Hey, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. We discern by the spirits that this man has got a brand new anointing. Let's put him to work. Rest assured, your ministry and your anointing will make room for itself, and they will work a good horse to death. Amen. Say amen. Ah, oh, thank the Lord. Immediately they said, This Bible school has a pool. It's poison. We can't drink out of this water and never have been able to. So would you kindly come and heal the waters? It's funny about those sons of the prophets there in Jericho living in a town that was under a curse. For when Joshua shouted the walls of Jericho down, he stood on the ruins and said, Cursed be the man that builds again Jericho. He shall set up the foundations in his firstborn. He shall hang the gates thereof in his lastborn. Heal the Bethelite, rebuilt Jericho, but tonight there was just one verse about heal the Bethelite who built the town that had no business being there. He must lay in hell tonight because the word of God cannot be broken. Cursed be the man who builds again Jericho. And while I'm on the subject, cursed be the man who builds again the thing he once destroys, for he has made himself a transgressor. It is the way of the transgressor that is hard, not the way of the saint. Say praise the Lord. Are you happy? Now the town is there. The Bible school is there of a foul environment that can't hardly believe God. They have gifts, but only half enough to be successful. They had the word of knowledge that morning. Know ye not that your master will be translated today? Hush, said Elisha, I know that too. I got the word of knowledge. He walked back. They discerned by the discerning of spirits, the spirit of Elijah, the rest upon Elisha. But evidently they did not have the gift of healing, or they would have healed their own water. And I know they didn't have the gift of faith because they sent out 50 valiant, rugged, strong men to search for three long weeks to find out whether or not God dropped Elijah on a mountain. Elisha tried to stop them in his embarrassment but couldn't. So when they returned after three weeks, they hung their heads and said, I guess you're right, Elisha. When God takes you to heaven, he takes you all the way. We couldn't find his corpse, no place. Would you pray for our unbelief? In fact, ask for a gift of faith. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no verbiness nor any shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Thus embarked a ministry that was certainly twice as much as Elijah. For Elijah had worked seven miracles in his ministry in his lifetime, and seven is God's perfect number. But when Elisha asked for the double portion, that meant he would have to work 14. And he worked them, the 14th after he was dead. You can compass sea and dry land if you want to, but you'll never change the Word of God. The Word of God will come to pass if God has to raise every corpse in Tampa to do it. Say praise God. His Word will not return void, but accomplish what he will. What is the chaff to the wheat? 
Is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Why don't you fall upon the stone and be broken tonight? Woe to the man upon whom the rock shall fall. It will grind him to powder. Hallelujah to God. Lo, hallelujah to God. So he said, quickly, boys, I'll show you a few things. Bring me a new cruise of salt. And he poured in the salt. And he poured it in that spring. It was a spring, but it was a poison spring. Aren't you glad for the springs of living life that spring up within the well that Jesus installed shall be in you a well of water springing up unto life eternal. However, some folks' spring is poison. The poison of asps is in their tongue. Breathing out slaughterings and threatenings and blasphemies and wishing to destroy the church of God was Saul of Tarsus riding his high horse to Damascus. When he got slapped down in the dust and he bit the dust in humility, a voice spoke out of heaven and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And that great religious teacher and leader and uh, religious know-it-all that knew everything about the law and kept every letter of it asked a very stupid question. He said, Who art thou, Lord? Here's a religious person that didn't even know who the Lord was. However, he wasn't long in finding out when the voice returned saying, I am Jesus. <laughs> if you want to know who the Lord is, I'll tell you he's Jesus. And if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all tonight. Say amen. Are you happy? <laughs> Glory to God, are you happy still? Now the new cruise of salt was poured into the pool. The poison spring cleared up. Mm. If there's anything that will heal, heal you tonight and heal your poison spring, huh, it's new salt. Listen, you salt of the earth. Have you lost your savor? Or are you new? Are you fresh? Do you have a sting? Do you have bite? Hallelujah. If we will pour ourselves into the muddy sea of sin, for the wicked are like a troubled sea, continually stirring up muck and mire. There's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. If we all jump headlong into the midst of it, I believe there is that quality about salt that it will take out the poison and the rot and the corruption and the uncleanness and the staleness. Say praise God. Oh, but if you have no savor, ye salt, I am afraid that you'll be fit for the dunghill and to be cast out and trodden beneath the feet of men. Do you ever get that run-down feeling where people walk on you and all over you every day? Maybe you've lost your savor and you're laying on the dunghill. Say amen. Maybe you're like the Pharisees that are hidden sepulchers, full of dead man's bones, sepulchers that appear not, and men walk over them all day, don't even know they're there. Why, I tell you, when you start getting to be the kind of salt that Jesus has called you to be, the salt of the earth and not the sugar of the earth, sugarcoat and everything, they won't walk over you because they'll know you're there. You won't have to worry. When they come to church with you, you won't be unknown or unheard of in that church. You won't have to say that so-and-so go to your church. They'll know that so-and-so goes to your church because of their shout, their dance, their testimony, their prophecy, their obedience, their gift. Say hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Now the pool was healed, and now all the sons of the prophets have continuously drunk from it ever since. Oh, thank God for healing by way of the salt. So if you've got a good wound here tonight, I hope I can pour some salt in it. It'll cure it. Say amen. Hallelujah. Now he's leaving Jericho because he knows that there's no future in a cursed town. The environment is not correct there for real uh, overcoming advantageous victory. Some folks' environment is so polluted that uh, they couldn't live for God over an hour unless they had the preacher breathing down their throat and checking on them by phone. Uh, well, they had the stereo playing gospel music all afternoon. It's the only way they could ever stay in victory. You either better get more power in your life or change your environment. One or the other, get out of Jericho. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the little old bald-headed Elisha wasn't much to look at, but he was anointed of God. 
and that's all that counts. So it don't matter how much hair you get on your head if you're going to preach. Hallelujah. He said, I am doing one thing beside preach, said the little old bald head. I'm going up. How many is going up with him? Hallelujah. I'm going up in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. And he is going to go up to Bethel. Now, first, you've got to go up to Bethel, the house of God. Then when you get straightened out in the house of God, then you can go up to heaven in the uh, rapture of the church. The translation. Amen. For you see, we must assemble ourselves together much more so as we see the day approaching. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Someone said, I'm going to stay home and watch church this morning on television. Well, you're out of the word. Uh, well, what are those programs for, Brother Freddie? If some of us are not supposed to watch them, are you still in your sin? Are you still a sinner? Are you still unchurched and unreached? If those programs are preaching what they ought to, the Word of God, they will reach the sinner. That's their function. They will reach the invalid that can't get out of the house and heal them. That's their function. They will reach the uh, powerless doubter and make a power-filled believer out of him and, and send them out to the house of God, the local assembly. That's their function. Say amen. Hallelujah to God. So after you're no longer in your sin and God has set you free, then you're supposed to come on home to Father's house where he'll restore your land and your house to you. And restoration will be yours. Thank God. You may have been gone seven years down into Egypt, the type of the world, you great woman of Shuma, you, but at the very perfect timing of an almighty God, you will show up at the same time the king gets talking about you. Say hallelujah. You're not here by an accident. You're not here by coincidence. You're here in God's timing tonight. You're about to receive the message of the hour in God's timing here tonight. Not everybody could receive this, but you're here because you can. Hallelujah. We have a lot of dead weight and driftwood here tonight that would be lost with what this is going to consist of before it's over with. But you're here for a purpose. What perfect timing. This timing is going to lead to restoration. Oh, tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and tell you. Hallelujah to God. So he's going up to Bethel now, Bethel the house of God. And while he's passing by the town, out comes a bunch of children. The connotation in the original Hebrew was that these were not babies, but some of them were big teenagers. Some were young adults, but their sensibility was failing them. A fool, when he walketh in the way, telleth everybody that he is a fool. Some people, you don't have to listen to them talk too long before you can gauge their brains. Say praise the Lord. All you got to do is just listen for a little while. And you'll be able to categorize them in the category of either moron or imbecile or idiot. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening? Now here, he's going up to Bethel and these uh, children, these youth, these immature Resident of Bethel, the house of God. Oh, we have some feeble-minded in the house of God. We have to comfort the feeble-minded. But there's a difference between being feeble-minded and being just too lazy to learn. Are you listening? Getting kind of rough, isn't it? Well, it gets lots tougher than this, so brace yourself. Praising the Lord. Now they come out laughing, oh, go on up. You bald head, go on up, you bald head, go on up, you bald head. Well, he said, I don't care if you talk about my bald head. But don't mock about my going up. Because as you're ridiculing my going up, that's only going to put you in the category of not being able to go up. You can't handle this thing lightly and then plan to hold it seriously. You can't go around mocking, speaking in tongues, and mocking, slapping people on the head, and mocking, uh, casting out devils, and mocking uh, devils and people, and then actually expect to come in here and cast out a devil. That accuser of the brethren's got a long finger, brother. And sometimes that liar tells the truth. 
and God knows he's a liar, but it really sticks in God's craw when he finds out the devil's told the truth about you. All the time he's accused him, but some of his accusations may stick. And you'll find yourself powerless. You'll be one of the seven sons of Sceva who found out that they didn't know Jesus after all. For the devil will say, Jesus I know, and Paul I'm acquainted with, but who in the world are you? Say amen. So they mocked about his going up, therefore the immature Christians did not go up. I said those inhabitants of Bethel, the house of God, the, uh, the childish saints, those nursing bottle Christians. Hallelujah. Coming out mocking, having plenty to say about the old prophet that's going up. All oh, glory. Take a look, I'll be gone any time. Don't wink your eye now, because maybe that'll be the twinkling. Who's going with me? <laughs> you better hurry up and get prepared while you still get a few minutes. At least we've got a few more minutes tonight, I think. Hallelujah. He may be here by the time you wake up in the morning. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Of course, they used to believe that 20 years ago. Now that we got proof that Jesus is coming in this generation, nobody wants to believe it no more. Isn't people the weirdest thing you ever did see? As long as it's pie in the sky and the fabric of the imagination, fine. Amen. Now, God's going to heal you, and he's going to perform miracles here tonight, but not before the Word of God goes forth. I just assume every one of you got sick and died rather than not preach tonight. Say amen. Wave your hand in victory. My life comes to the Word. How about yours? Shako yala mahathra. Whoa, blessed be God. I love him. Oh, glory. And then I should look around at those immature members of the church, residents of the house of God, Bethel, and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. You know, some folks are cursed. Don't look at this preacher. I didn't put no curse on him. I, there's nothing negative about the gospel I preach. I try to get the curse off of them. Just because I... I see something in the spirit that might happen nine years down the road, and you don't want prayer for that, you better stitch in time saves nine. Say amen. But there's some folks that they're, they're not blessed. Maybe I, uh, I'll soothe you a little bit. I won't say curse. I'll say you're just not blessed. Well, you wouldn't dare sit down at the table with them. You wouldn't dare eat off the same dish they ate off. Them. Huh? You wouldn't even dare have them for friends. You wouldn't dare let them in your house. Hallelujah. Everything they touch withers. Everything they put their hands on breaks. Eh? Everything that uh, you lend them is destroyed. I better hush on that point. Ah, he turned around and cursed those immature members of Bethel. And just now two she-bears came lumbering out of the woods and devoured and ripped and tore and ate 42 children. Someone said, oh, don't talk like that's in your Bible. If it's in the Bible, I'll say it. There's nothing in that Bible I'm scared of. In fact, there's no controversial scripture that I'm afraid to quote. <laughs> that's how much I love it from cover to cover. I'll say amen. <laughs> Glory to God forever. So now, what a sight, what a blood-curdling sight, ripping in tongue and devouring. Oh, Elijah just looked on. There wasn't either of the bears offered to scratch him. Nary one of them would come after him and try to devour him. Difference between being a child and being a prophet. Difference between immaturity and maturity difference between uh, not willing to learn and those that have uh, sought God until they persevere. Hallelujah. There's a difference between the cursor and the cursed. And there is still a difference between the blesser and the blessed. Hallelujah. God is still in his heaven. We are still upon his earth. We're the ones that need to get there. Don't get heady and high-minded. Say amen. Are you listening? Well, there it went on. Elisha just went on up to Bethel, and 42 children were devoured. Now, months speaks of immaturity, but years speaks of maturity. 
The type has its fulfillment and anti-type in this generation when the tribulation does occur. For out of the woods of this world shall come two beasts, the Antichrist and the false prophet. And when they come out of the woods and they bite and rip and devour and destroy and tear up for 42 months of immaturity upon the immaturity, I say the children that could grow and refuse to grow. I say the five virgins that were foolish that went to sleep with no oil on the lamp and no trimming in the wick. And some folks still need a good trimming. And they were slumbering and sleeping at the midnight moment. Their fire was gone out. They missed out. And I said, half the church missed the rapture. Huh? I don't know when the five wise are going. We may not go before we see the Antichrist, according to Paul and Thessalonians. He is to be revealed, you know. That takes Holy Ghost revelation. Didn't say he'd be on the front page of Time, Life, and Newsweek saying, I am the Antichrist. That he'd be revealed. That takes the Holy Ghost. If some folks still got the Holy Ghost upon this earth, that simply means the Holy Ghost has not taken the church to meet Jesus in the air just yet. We're only talking about a period of seven years. We may go through some tribulation, whereas tribulation is terminology that applies on to God's people throughout Scripture. Amen. Hear me now. There's a difference between tribulation and the wrath of God. The wrath of God falleth upon the children of disobedience, and we are not appointed unto wrath, children of disobedience. There's where the wrath comes. Halfway through that week, this Antichrist, this world leader who signs that peace treaty, will break it and force the world. Halfway through the seven years, he will force the world to worship him by way of a mark. Hallelujah. That's when he puts the abomination of desolation in the Holy of Holies in the rebuilt temple of Jerusalem. It's another message I don't want to get into. Hallelujah. You listening? Hallelujah. I don't know when I'm going up, but I am going up. I may go through some tribulation. Oh, I'm no chicken. I have the Lord convert my wishbone to a backbone. Say amen. But as far as the wrath of God is concerned, I have no part of that. Are you listening? And then we're just talking about a period of time that will be over before you know it. A world government is formulating beneath our nose, and very shortly it will be one world government. Greece has just joined. By January the 1st, she'll be recognized officially as the tenth horn of the beast. Say amen. Oh, glory. There is a man in this world today who answers to the tune of Antichrist. I don't know who he is. But when I find out who he is by discerning, there won't be nothing else that I can think of that needs to happen before Jesus calls me. Say praise the Lord. It is the last 42 months where he devours and bites and destroys the immature, foolish virgins the half church that didn't make it uh, before the wrath. Say amen. Are you listening tonight? Oh, glory. And he keeps on traveling, and he somehow gets down into the wilderness. And all of a sudden, three kings show up. They're going to whip the socks off in old Edom and Moab. But the trouble was, they forgot to take a little water with them. Worst was, there was no water where they were. They had to have a drink in seven days. How many knows that'll make you weak? It won't make you weak. It'll make you weak. Hallelujah. Chew on it. Oh, said somebody, God's brought us down here to destroy us. Is there no man of God in the midst, any place in this whole army? None that we know of. Oh, said the righteous king of the three kings, and the other two therefore was wicked. I know I'm outnumbered because me and God's a two-thirds majority against the devil, but look what I'm teamed up with. I am outnumbered two to one. And said Elisha, who stepped out of the fracas, if it wasn't for the righteous king Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't pay no attention to any one of you. I'd turn my back on you. I'd kick dust in your face. Brother, boldness came upon this prophet. 
He didn't worry about if he was talking to a king or a pauper. Hallelujah. Surely, he said, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't do a thing for you. But now, bring me a minstrel. And let him play. Oh, come on, boy. Give me one of those Holy Ghost tunes. And the minstrel started to play. Started to sing, amazingly, on no water. Parched tongue and roof of his mouth, but he sang. Wasn't long before moisture fell. In fact, the dew of heaven fell. In fact, the Holy Ghost came upon the minstrel as he played and sang. And, and oh, Elisha says, let me near him. And he sided over close and kind of uh, rubbed shoulders with this minstrel that was playing in the spirit. And did you know the spirit of God rubbed off on Elisha? And that anointing that was on the man who played and sang kind of overflowed and fell upon the man that had a word of the Lord to give. He didn't know what it was till the Spirit struck him, but the same anointing that made the minstrel play and sing made the prophet prophesy. Oh, said Elijah, I got it. Make this valley full of ditches. Ye will not feel the wind nor see water, but in the morning ye shall have water. And all night long they dug ditches. Isn't it time to start digging in? Huh? I said, dig. The unjust steward about to be kicked out of his ministry said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I cannot dig. Brother, if you cannot dig, you're in trouble. And when you start digging, the things you dig out wouldn't be worth mentioning. There's an awful lot of rubble down beneath the surface, but if you'll dig it out, you'll have water. I said, you have water. I don't want to start naming what you need to dig out of your life right now. Or maybe I will. I don't know. But I do want you to have water. Don't you want to drink water instead of dying of thirst? Well, then get to digging and dig out whatever is necessary. There are some things that, Paul, that's lawful for me, but they're not expedient. In fact, I could do without them. As a matter of fact, if he wrote Hebrews, he said, Seeing your compassion about us such a great cloud of witnesses, witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset you. It's one thing to lay aside your sin. You've got to do that. But how about the weights? How about the weights? Maybe it's not sin, but it's something that'll hold you down, something that'll hold you back. And if you're going to run a race like you intend to win the race, you're going to have to get rid of the weights too because you just can't overcome it and outrun it. Hallelujah. Oh, let's dig. In the morning, the valley was full of water. The Moabites got up and looked. What is all that red shining over in the army of the three kings of Israel? Oh, it is blood. They received a delusion, a deception. Why, the three kings have turned on one another. They have slain one another. Oh, quick, Moab, to the spoil. And, of course, when they got there, they discovered too late that the red morning sun was shining on the water. <laughs> oh, glory. Is the sun of righteousness a rising of healing in his wings here this morning? Shame. Is he shining on your water? If he's shining on that spring of yours that's no longer poison, it'll have a red hue to it. Oh, you're looking at an old boy that is covered by the blood. He's covered by the blood. From his head to his toes, blood's been put on this old ex-leper's ear, and he don't hear what he used to. All blood's been put on this ex-leper's great thumb, and he don't do what he used to. Hallelujah. And blood's on his right great toe, and he don't go where he used to. This boy is covered by the blood. He's free from his leprosy. Say hallelujah to God. If you see the Son of God shining on me, you're bound to see the blood. Oh, it's resting just over the spring. <laughs> oh, glory, are you happy? Thank the Lord. So if you're in need tonight, the secret is dig in, my friend. Dig in. Oh, glory. Let the same spirit that's on someone else get on you. It'll make you do your thing. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm happy. Lo and behold, a little woman come along to Elijah and said, Oh, man of God, thy servant, my husband, is dead. Notice, 
that this little lady knew that her husband belonged to God first and then to her. Thy servant, my husband. Hello. Eh, you don't own everyone everything. Ooh, he that is owned by the Lord is bought of a price. He's not his own. He's bought of something more precious than silver and gold, the precious blood. Can't do what he please. He doesn't really have his own will. He's a bond servant to the Lord. He has a, his ear pierced through an all and nailed to the door because this is a love slave. Say praise the Lord. Are you listening? I love him. <laughs> Glory. You enjoying this? Come on, get a great big bite. And taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusts in him. It tastes just like honey in the rock. Some of you know what I'm talking about and some of you don't. But it's real anyhow. I feel so sorry for you people that are ignorant of God's word. I could sit right down and squall. I know we've left you 20 miles behind the dust. Hallelujah to God. Oh, let's apply righteous spiritual scriptural principle here and see what new truth affords us. It is new truth that sets you free, makes you speak in tongues, gives you a glory spell, feeds your soul, and gets you through tomorrow. Say praise the Lord. New truth. Nothing stale. Woo, hallelujah. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that he was an austere man, and he feared God, and he did not fail God, and now he's dead, and he left the debt. We're all debtors to the Lord. But when we become debtors to man, there's where we're really in for it. Because they'll throw you in the prison house if you won't pay. They'll send the lawyers after you. Say amen. They'll sue you. They'll slander you. They'll rob you blind. They'll take everything you got. Well, you could work all your life, 50 years, you could save up a little money in the bank and be in the hospital five days, and that would be the end of it. Say amen. The medical profession has got the United States of America raped by the throat with a death grip. And they can kill you by way of experimentation, and the cops can't do one thing about it. Well, sir, it could not be helped. Well, if you say so, doctor, you're the highest authority in the land when it comes to physical measures. I got a news for you tonight. There's a higher authority in this land. The great physician now is near. The sympathizing Jesus. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God forever. Did you know the hour is coming when behind closed doors and maybe underground you'll be sitting for days on end listening to the Word of God and loving it and wanting to know what the direction for your life might be from heaven? Don't be down this looking at my watch and God, I got two minutes. Can you bless me in two minutes business? Say amen. Now, the creditor's coming. He's on his way. He's going to take my only two boys for slaves to pay the debt. Did you know that your first debtor, the one that, uh, your first creditor, the, the one that you're in debt to first, is actually the old devil. And Jesus has bought you back. He's redeemed you from the enemy. Hallelujah. In fact, if things don't change, you're going to be with your old number one creditor forever. He got a claim on you. Why? Because you was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me, David said. There's none righteous, no, not one. Huh? All we like sheep have gone astray. Hallelujah. Now he's coming. We know that if you don't get saved, the old devil's coming after you. And if he thinks you're going to get saved, you'll come a few days quicker. He doesn't want you to get through to deliverance and redemption and salvation before he drags you down to a devil's hell. Say amen. And he's going to take my two boys. They didn't do nothing. They always were fine fellows and they played and had a good time and they're such strong young fellows. They're going to be able to do so much. And they're the only ones I got to help me and now the credit is coming because the debt is not paid. Oh, aren't you glad the debt's paid? Ooh, he bought me. Bought my soul on Calvary. Oh, said Elisha, that's right. Your husband's been working for God, therefore God will work for him. 
Go through this neighborhood and get every vessel you can, every empty vessel possible. Oh, glory. Get as many as you can. Bring your vessels, not a few. And what do you got in your house? How many believes it starts off with what you got in your house? Unto him that half shall be given. Unto him that hasn't got anything, God will take away even that which he seems to have and give it to him that hath. You want something from God, you've got to have something to start with. You ever wonder why some people hate to see you coming? They'd rather see a rattlesnake come in and see you come. Because they know you've got something from God. And every time you get around them, the, what they think they got from God, which is nothing, seems to be leaving them. And you're absorbing it. Come on now. Oh, I'm getting down here to the nitty-gritty. So some folks would rather not see you come because they feel themselves losing what they think they got, and you wind up with it. You'll never feel that way if you really got something from God. Say praise God. Unto him that half shall be given. You want something from God to give you more. If you've got something to start with. Ooh, I've got salvation. Well, that's a good start. Look out, you're going to have something added to you tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I got a little oil in a little pot. It's not much. That's enough. Whatever you got's enough. Now get in that house and shut the door. And don't forget to take your two boys with you. They're the roots of the problem. Uh, well, I'm going to pray for Johnny and for Sammy. You better get Johnny and Sammy in there and help pray for themselves along with you. I'd be like one pulling against the other. Hallelujah. They went in and shut the door, and all three of them began to pour out onto the Lord. You ever poured out onto God? You ever poured your heart out to God? You ever poured your soul? You ever poured it out before God? If these old tears that haven't been shed in ten years, you ever let them pour out? You may have to bust the tear ducts open in your eyes, but let them pour out tonight. Say praise God. Whoa! As they poured out onto the Lord, guess what happened? They filled the first vessel and looked in the original pot and they still had oil. I'm talking about the greatest multiplication table that ever existed. When God multiplies the anointing, there is never too little anointing to go around and to share and to deliver every person that needs it. Oh, why don't you bring your old empty vessel up here tonight and let God fill you full of oil. Oh, rise, old Samuel. Fill thy horn of oil. You're going to Bethlehem, the house of bread, the place of beginnings today. I've got a king among some sons. I've got a lot of sons, but a few kings. Say praise the Lord. Are you happy for the oil? They filled the house of empty vessels and started pouring in. Huh? Filled one vessel. Well, that one's full, and I still got oil. I guess I'll go through the house and see if I can. You mean this works this way? Hold to the brim. Well, we should have got more vessels. We got the house packed now, but we ought to really pack the attic too. Walked all over the house and filled every vessel and all a few. And they still had oil. I mean, believe that's the way anointing and revival should be. Pack the house out and fill every one of them and then fill everything that can get in the house. Let me tell you the rest of the tale. Elisha showed up and she said, what am I going to do with all this oil? He said, go sell it. It'll take care of the creditor. Why don't you buy the truth and sell it not tonight? <laughs> Why don't you get a grip on this thing and, and sell everything you have and buy that pearl of great price? I promise you one thing. This oil will take care of the creditor. This oil will take care of that old man when he comes in to take your sons out to make slaves and dope addicts out of them and drunks out of them, smokers and uh, a pot heads out of them and ruins their life. I'll tell you, if there's anything that'll take care of the creditor, that old devil, it's the oil of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. For when the enemy would come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against the devil. The anointing breaks the yoke and the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah!
Oh, who art thou, old mountain? Before the rubber bell thou shalt become a plain. It's not by might and not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. There'll never be a devil crawl in this place if we can get every vessel filled with oil. There's one thing that takes care of a creditor. It's oil. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Are you happy? And as he went to Shunem, a great woman looked out her window and said to her husband, There, I perceive, goes a holy man. Discerning his spirits, word of knowledge, whatever you want to call it. In the life of a Gentile heathen? Hmm, how interesting. Some folks don't have the only corner of monopoly on the gospel market. Hallelujah. She said, he comes by here so much and looks so tired to her husband. She said, should we not make a chamber on the wall and call it the prophet's chamber? Sure, he said. So they built up on the wall the chamber in which there was a bed and a table and a candlestick and a stool. And whenever he got real weary, he came and rested on the bed and entered into the rest wherewith he called the weary to rest. For there remaineth a rest unto the people of God. And he knelt down by the stool and he prayed through and did not get through praying until he prayed through. And when he got hungering after righteousness, he sat up to the table and he got fed. And then when the dark shadows came, he lit the light for his testimony was a high beacon, a city set on a hill and he didn't lay it beneath a bushel. Whenever he left this prophet's chamber, I'll guarantee you he was a refreshed prophet. One day he said to his servant Gehazi, this woman's done so much for us, shouldn't we do something for her? What could we ask God for, for her sake? Oh, said the servant, how about asking her for a son? Or asking God for a son for her. And she said, I didn't ask for a son. If you want me to have a son, all right, but I didn't ask for it. Don't lie to me. There's one thing people don't want done is any lies give to them. People are looking for the truth. And when God promises you something, he's not an Indian giver. He's not going to give it and then take it away again. Say praise God. Even though it looked like that, when the boy came and was born and was old enough to go out to the field and he took a sunstroke and he grabbed his head and he, his, mama's, his father sent him to his mother and she, the boy sat on mama's lap to noon and died. And it looked like God had took him back. And everybody thought, well, that's it. But the great woman of Shuma was not overweight. She was abounding in faith, great faith. <laughs> she jumped on her mule and somebody said, where, where are you going today on that mule? It's not a new moon. It's not the Sabbath day. It's no special day. She said, no, never mind where I'm going. Everything's going to be all right. The boy was dead. She carried him up to the prophet's chamber and laid that corpse on the prophet's bed. There... Get a picture with me. Here is the son of the promise. Was not this boy a promised son? Are not you sons and daughters of the promise? Laying around on the prophet's bed. Right where there used to be rest and feeding and uh, praying and interceding and letting the light shine. Right where the anointing used to move. Here is a lot of corpses just laying down in the prophet's room. Right where God used to move. Right in churches where mighty revival used to be. Right in cities that used to know what holiness was all about. Here's a bunch of corpses laying around. Sons of the promise at that. Oh, I could preach here tonight. But she jumped on her mule, this great woman of Israel. This mom in Israel. This intercessory prayer warrior. Say amen. Glory to God. And she was riding and someone stopped and said, How are you today? She said, I haven't got time to tell you. Well, can't you tell us how your husband is? How's the house? How's the family? And above all, how's that little boy? Does the devil know your weak spot? Does he know where to rub it in? Uh, she grit her teeth and kept riding. And Elisha saw her from Mount Carmel said to his servant, Hey, so get down there and talk to that woman. And down went the servant, and she brushed right past him. Would him talk to him? How is everything? It... Never mind. I haven't got time to talk to you. Where's the prophet of God? He's up there on the mountain. Fine. 
she came into his presence and grabbed him by the knees and wouldn't let go. said, I'll never leave you until God intervenes and does something. Didn't I ask you to give me, if God was going to give me a son, not to lie to me, not to deceive me? I didn't ask for it. What are you trying to do? Crush this poor old heart of mine? I'll never have a son. I didn't ask for this son. But the least you could do if I am going to have a son is don't take him. Oh, said Elisha, I see what your trouble was because until that moment, he said, God had hid from him the woman's sorrow. God hath not showed me. There's some people think the preacher ought to know everything. There's a lot of things God won't show a preacher. Say praise the Lord. But there's some of those things that God won't show a preacher that he will show you. And he has showed you a hundred times you hadn't done nothing about it yet. Say amen. Oh, glory. Amen. Any more weak-minded? Why? I don't know. I better go home now. Hallelujah. I'm getting heavy here tonight. Say amen. One thing about the Holy Ghost. Ministers on everybody's level. Maybe you don't know much, but on your level you will receive. That's how the supernatural ministers the word. Say amen. And yet, if you're filled up with everything else, you can't hold much of the word. But if you're starved to death for this thing tonight, you'll eat for days. Strictly up to you. Say praise God. Well, I'm feeling glorious in my soul. <laughs> Lord. Oh, he said, Gehazi, oh, my servant, come here. Here's your big chance to work a miracle. Take my staff. Go down and raise that corpse. Get I? And he went up to the prophet's chamber where he'd been with the prophet many times. There was that dead son of the prophet, that corpse laying right where the prophet's minister used to minister. He hit him on the head, nothing happened. He hit him on the chest, nothing happened. He hit him on the arms, nothing happened. The legs, nothing. What's going on? This is Elijah's staff. Yeah. Elisha had Elijah's mantle. It worked for him. There's a difference between being called and being sent. What's the difference? The preparation period. Waiting on God, period. The same God that called you will send you. Don't get impatient. He could send you quickly, or you could spend the rest of your life just dragging your feet around, and finally, before you die, He might send you. Say, praise God. Woo! It's strictly up to you. Say, Amen. He went back with the staff and said, Oh, Elisha, nothing happened. He said, Oh, what in the world I send a boy to do a man's job for? So he went down and stretched himself upon the child, and even for him it didn't come easy. Nothing happened except the flesh of the child waxed warm at the first touch. I see some of you have got your first touch now. No wonder you're warming up to this thing. But lukewarm won't get it. Just warming up to what God's going to do won't get it either. Amen. Brother, he went praying around downstairs, walked back upstairs, stretched out on that boy the second time. And when he touched him the second time, the spirit returned to his body. He sneezed seven times, kicked his leg over the side of the bed, jumped on his feet. And Elijah said, Gehazi, I'll take this boy and give him back to his mama. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord of God forever. Rabba, babu, hu, What happened? You know what happened. He got the second touch. Oh, don't you know that you need a second touch tonight because last night's wasn't good enough. You've only cooled off from that one. But tonight there's a brand new unction from the Holy One that's surging down to you. It'll give you life for a look. Hallelujah to God. Whoa, la la ba Glory to God. This was the little woman that Elias eventually came back to and said, Woman, there's going to be a big famine around here for seven years. Couldn't get no one else to believe it, but she believed it. Why, she knew better not to believe it, that's why. When she saw her son raised from the dead, a son that was promised when she was too old to even have one, she
She knew that when that man spoke and said seven years of trouble that this land has never seen is going to hit. Hallelujah. She said, I'm getting out of here. I'll be back in seven years. Ushallah bahai. <laughs> Lord, you can go look for me all you want to, but I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving this place. I don't know if it's a full seven or not quite seven. I don't know just what it's going to be. But I'll tell you what uh, uh, Obadiah said concerning his master Ahab. He had been looking in every nation on earth for old Elijah. But Elijah had been caught away by the Spirit. There wasn't no country he hadn't looked for him and couldn't find him. And all the time, Elijah was just underneath his nose, but God hit him. Say amen. God will hide me until the time comes to rise up higher. Say amen. In the meantime, you can look for me. You'll never find me. I'll be back at the end of the famine. I'll be back on a white horse. You ought to see my white horse. <laughs> my, that's a pretty thing. He just runs. He just flies and sails. He just uh, goes from heaven to earth, from earth to Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Pluto goes on through the Milky Way. He goes beyond the sun, moon, and stars. He goes all the way beyond the universe and back again. This is a mighty white horse I'm riding. You read about him in Revelation chapter 19. Oh, when heaven was open and he sat upon a white horse whose name was faithful and true. Behind him were the armies of heaven sitting on white horses clothed in fine linen and clean and white, which is the righteousness of these saints. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Oh, blessed be God. Are you happy? Thank God. I know there's potheads that gets high on a trip and they see white horses flying around. But as high as they ever got, they never left the earth yet. Their old body was still walking around. They were just hallucinating. They were just fantasizing. Brother, I'm talking about reality. I'm not talking about fantasy. This is the real thing. Say amen. Oh, glory. And the reason they see all these things is because when they take the drugs, they open themselves wide open for demon possession, and the devils crawl in and de deludes them. That's why. And all you that's got rock and roll records in your house has got one demon per album in your house. Huh? Do you want to know why all the confusion at your house? You go dig out those uh, that record rack and destroy and burn all that stuff. I guarantee you all the confusion will start leaving your house because it never got to your house till they came in. <laughs> Say amen. Well, I'm happy. Praise the Lord. Don't talk about rock. We are doing that in the church now. You can do it all in the church all you want to, but you won't catch me doing it in the church. I'm not just going to change the lyrics and keep the same old spirit. Brother, i got a different spirit. It's called the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen. Well, don't you folks get with it around here? Yes, but I'm talking about Holy Ghost deliverance music here that's glorifying the name of Jesus. And you can understand the lyrics. You can tell what this preacher's preaching. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, no punches pulled. Say amen. Glory to God. rub a rosary eye. Well, glory, I'm feeling mighty fine. Got heaven on my mind. I'm going to get a few folks mad at me tonight if I keep on meddling here. Wouldn't that be wonderful if I could just do that? I need a few more enemies to keep the thing balanced. Say amen. Oh, say praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. I used to have a whole lot more enemies than I have now. That's not too healthy, is it? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm happy for Jesus. Now then. Glory. I'm tasting this. Praise God. How many's tasting it with me? Praising the Lord of hosts. I love you, Jesus. The drought came. Dearth. The sons of the prophets all sat down. Nothing to eat. Hmm. A great pot. Some say, oh, never mind a great pot. We don't have enough to make a sandwich. But Elijah stepped up and said, hey, get out the great pot. I'm just looking for a great pot here tonight. <laughs> you know, everybody do something. Get out there in the woods and get what you can. 
So they got some herbs and some roots and some meat and some this and some that. And how many believes that members in particular all have to do whatever they can? Huh? Some shout, some dance, some run, some cry, some pray, some do cartwheels, some prophesy, some exercise one of the nine gifts. Others exercise the fruits. Huh? If you're going to exercise a gift, you better uh, exercise a fruit with it. Because if there's nine gifts, there's also nine fruits, and the fruit is to balance the gift, because the gift is for the soul, but the fruit's for the flesh. Say amen. Well, everything was going fine. The pot was getting filled up. Do you believe we'll fill the pot tonight if everybody does his thing in this meeting? Except one fella got a wild herb out there, a root, and took a lot of gourds off in it and had a whole lap fall. Hmm? Some said, well, I've got a lap fall. Well, you haven't heard anything yet. They threw that in the pot, and nobody was the wiser. They were just ignorant of the thing that they had got a hold of. Like a lot of people running around like chickens with the heads cut off, just tossed to and fro, back and forth, up and down, swayed here and there, and they're liable to come up with anything, not even know what they got a hold of. Hallelujah. Well, they started eating. Some said, oh, quit, prophet. Save yourself. It's too late for me. There's death in the pot. Death in the pot? Oh, he said, don't worry about that. Get me some new meal. And he found himself a new meal. A new pile of meal. How many want some new meal tonight? You don't know, but what you're hearing right now is a brand new meal. And if there's any poison in your old system or any old threatenings and slaughterings and uh, hatreds breathing out from beneath your old tongue, this meal will straighten you out fast. It'll calm the troubled waters. It'll clear the poison from your system. And he poured in the meal and it healed the pot of potters and all God's prophets set out and started eating. Right in the dearth, right in the famine, out of the great pot. I'm talking about the great pot tonight. God's Word, new in God's Word, all mixed up together. And if you've got a hold of anything wild, this wildfire will be uh, petered out by the new message of this hour. Hallelujah. Glory. Just now came a fellow and said, Hey, I hear that you folks are having a hard job finding something to eat. Not anymore. We've got the new meal cleaning up anything that goes in the great pot. But I brought an offering. Well, if you brought an offering, God bless you. And a man from Belshazzar walked up. And he had bread of the first fruits. How many knows the first fruits that I'm talking about? This bread of life that come down from heaven and gave life on the world is the first fruits of them that slept. And because he now is out of the grave and lives, we shall live also. He is the forerunner that's already entered into, into that which is within the veil. And because he's run in for me, I can follow him anywhere she's gone. He died, but he rose. I can die. I have that capability. I can shed my blood, but I can't save myself by doing so. Didn't qualify. But it wouldn't do no good for Jesus just to die. He had to raise from the dead. And because he raised, now I can raise, but I can't run ahead of him. He is the forerunner. He must run before. Say amen. Are you happy? Rid of the first fruits. And now we have 20 loaves of barley. Hallelujah. 20 loaves of barley. Must have been enough for a few, at least for 20. That's a score. And he had corn on the husks. Oh, it was kind of husky corn, all right. It needed to be stripped down. But when it got stripped down, we found that the slow and orderly growth of the kingdom of God was first the blade and then the ear and then the full corn in the ear. Paul planted, Paulus watered, God give the increase. Tasty, isn't it? Jesus goes through these kind of cornfields and picks ears at random. I hope he picks you tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> right for us alone. Whoa, glory to God. Oh, what wonderful food. But we've got so many prophets here. Someone said, well, there's just too many preachers. Is that so? Then why isn't the world saved? Well, you haven't got Tampa saved yet. The field is the world. And if God's give you anything, there'll be plenty of room made for it. Say amen. 
Oh, that's not enough to feed uh, all these prophets. Oh, don't worry, said Elisha. Let me do some multiplying here. And he broke the bread and the barley and the corn. And he fed a hundred. And there was still plenty left over, according to the word of the Lord. Do you remember there's only one other man ever did that? And that was the one who multiplied the loaves and the fishes. And he did it more than once. Say amen. Oh, don't you want to be a man from Belshelisha with no name, but we know where you're from? That's what the Holy Ghost is. Has no name, but we know where it's from. Comes out of heaven, and it feeds you and I on bread, and feeds you and I on corn. Gives us barley, which is the first crop. It is the first fruit. It is the first harvest of the year, the barley harvest. Say amen. Aren't you glad that he's feeding you first tonight? <laughs> Glory to God. If there's anything to be offered, you can have it right now. Aren't you happy? The man from Belshazzar of no name. Glory to God. I love him. This fellow had a name. Quite a name it was. Name men. And when he came down, because the little maid said, there's a prophet in our country. He said, that's good. I can't find one in this country. He said, now I'm going to ride up to the door with my fancy chariot. I brought the money to pay for my healing. Surely the man of God will come out and strike his hand over the place. Call on the name of the Lord, his God, not mine, his. And then he will cure me, and then I'll pay him, and I'll be on my way. And There's a lot of people got it planned in their head how God's going to do it, but God's not going to do it that way. As he rolled pompously up to the door, Elisha looked through the keyhole. I perceive, he said, but deserting his spirits, that man's too proud. Well, we're going to handle that first, because that's one of the things that shorts out God's power. Amen. So he hollered through the keyhole and said, uh, Mr. Naaman, this is your old bald-headed prophet speaking, go jump in the river. And he ran off, rolled off in a huff. Jumping that old river, that muddy Jordan River seven times. Uh, uh, why, those beautiful rivers of Damascus, Abana and Farpar are crystal clear. Yes, but they're not God's river. There is a difference, you see, between man's river and God's river. As muddy as old Jordan was, it was the only kind of, of a river that you could come out clean from. Oh, the realm of the Spirit is so contradictory. It's like fixing yourself in the mirror. You've got to learn to do it backwards. Because the Spirit realm is backwards from the natural realm. Everything you do in the natural to be success is opposite of the Spirit. If you want to go up, then you've got to come down. If you want to live, you've got to die. If you want to receive, you've got to give. If you want to find, you've got to lose. If you want to get clean, you've got to come out of Jordan's mud. Oh, he said, I'll really have to humble down. Naturally, you'll have to humble down. If you actually do a big thing, you could have you'd have done that and been proud to do it because you was the only one rich enough to do it. But he asked you to do a little small thing. Who have despised the day of small things? Held his nose, and he plunged in the mud. He come up looking like a hog out of the mire. You mean I got to do that six more times? Good thing he didn't tell you a hundred times. He'll tell you just as many times as it takes for you to get in the place to receive a miracle. One sister said, I want the Holy Ghost, but not like old Sister Jones received it. Guess how she finally received. Hallelujah. Many years later, are you listening? The seventh time he came out of that mud, he out his skin was like a baby his leprosy was all gone and he dashed to Elisha's house he didn't stay in the chariot he didn't poise pompously at the keyhole he jumped out of that chair pounded on that door kicked the door down and threw his muddy arms all around that little old bald head and said hey Elisha I found out something today got a revelation what was it you found out today he said I found there's no God in all the earth but in Israel hallelujah <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Whoa, glory. And it's true. There's no God in all the earth but in heaven. Hallelujah. And moving on earth by His Spirit. Amen. Every other religion is dead. Their founders are dead. It's all gone. Buddha's dead. Muhammad's dead. Confucius is dead. The Hindus are dead. Mary Baker Eddy is dead. Uh, Joseph Smith's dead. And Brigham Young's dead. But Jesus is still living. And that's what makes your religion so real and different. Oh, thank God for the living reality. Thank the Lord. Oh, I'm hurrying here, but I, I'm loving this. If you'll excuse me, uh, as I mentioned that, I, I'm loving this tonight. They decided they would go on to Jordan and take every man a beam. Because, you see, the place wherein we dwell is too straight for us. Of course, that's most folks' problem, where they're living and where they're having to go to church and attend is just a little too straight for them. But the real connotation of the word in the sixth chapter uh, of Second Kings meant it was too small. So if you've been living in a cubby hole and living in a shell, it's time to break out. I'm looking for some elbow room. What about you? You ought to find plenty of it here tonight. Say praise the Lord. Oh, man of God, we are going to build ourselves a new house where there's some more room. Uh, the acreage is too limited around here. Uh, would you kindly go with us? It's a good thing they asked him to go with them because they would need him before the day was over. When you get up this morning or tomorrow morning, make sure you ask Jesus to go with you because you'll need him before the day is over. Say hallelujah. Why, he said, I'll gladly consent to go. So quickly, he went with them. As they were felling a beam, one of the prophets lost his axe head. I see quite a, several here tonight had the same problem today. Some old battle axes flew off the handle today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. Yes, everything you got's borrowed. And when you get ready to leave this world naked, you'll find out you'll leave the way you came in it. Say amen. I've got my name on this deed. You ain't got your name on anything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And if anyone's got real estate problems, remember it's the meek that's going to inherit the earth. Say praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. The ex. It was born. Oh, what am I going to do? I, I'm here, Sir Elias. Aren't you glad the Lord's always near? Just show me the place. I'd like to have a nickel for all the folks that ever showed me the place. Hey, Brother Freddy, it's up here. Brother. No, it's back here, Brother Freddy. No, it's, it's here, Brother Freddy. It's here, Brother Freddy. All you got to do is show God the place. Listen, preachers don't heal you. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Show him the place. So he did something very strange, and of course God chose the foolishness of this world to confound the wise, and he cut off a branch with the remaining axe. What's the branch going to do? That's ridiculous. Ah, but it gives you an extra reach when we're reaching for the trouble spot. Reaching for the place? Where'd you say it was? Right over there? Come on, ye branches. Say Amen. You are workers together with God. Huh? Show him the trouble spot. And as he held it over there, the extra long reach, sure enough, God started to defy the law of gravity. The law of Einstein and Newton and medical science. Every kind of a law ever put into uh, operation, he'll change if it's necessary to meet your need. That's all he created the laws. He can change them on occasion if your faith wants it. Suddenly, the iron did swim, and it rose to the surface and floated. Oh, reach forth your hand and take this old axe and put it back on the handle. You've got to reach out and get this thing yourself. As soon as it materializes, you've got to put your hand on it and claim it. You've got to haul it in. 
You got to get a grip on it and bring it on to yourself and go back on the handle and go back to work for God yourself because the axe is laid to the root of the tree. And every tree that bring a forth not good fruit is shooed down and cast into the fire. One day I was at old battle axe and I sunk to the bottom of the mire. I thought it was all over for me until I felt a tug. Ooh, gravity started to let go. I felt like I was uh, going up on cloud nine. <laughs> I started feeling light as a feather. I started rising, soaring. And the higher I went, the more light I began to see. The more oxygen would soon appear. I wouldn't choke no more. And, and then I broke the surface and looked right up into the face of the sun. Say amen. Well, someone put his big hand around me and hauled me in. Here I am. Are you listening close? Say, I love you, Jesus. Praising God forever. Elisha told the king of Israel what the king of Syria said in his bedchamber. Would you please show me who the spy is in this army? Every time we set an ambushment, Israel knows just where we're at. Who's the, the culprit? We'll hang him. No culprit. It's that prophet again. It's that little old bald head again. Hallelujah. He tells the king of Israel everything you say in your bedchamber. What kind of a word of knowledge is that, said the heathen king? A word of knowledge. There are people that said things on the way to church tonight that's going to hear them repeated. Praise the Lord. He heard everything you said at the house before uh, you left this afternoon. He knows what you've been talking about. I'll tell you one thing. If you listen to the word of the Lord tonight, you'll save yourself from ambushment. You'll save your feet from an awful, horrible pit. Why, you'll save your old hide more than once if you listen to thus saith the Lord. Say amen. Why, where is this prophet in Dothan? Hence the next miracle. As he was in Dothan, Gehazi looked out the window that morning. The Syrians are everywhere. Oh, God, it's over. It's all over. <laughs> They're going to get us. We're surrounded. Oh, open the young man's eyes, said that double portion man. God, open the young fellow's His eyes sprung open, and every hill and cloud and mountain and the high part of the heavens was filled with chariots and armies and horses and all kind of the hosts of Israel. Oh, God, yeah, I've never seen such a mass army. They that be for us are more than they that be against us. And in other words, he was saying, A greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. When does the fight begin? No fight, said Elisha. I have something more powerful than all the armies of God. Oh, no. Nothing is more powerful than what I just saw. Watch my steam, said the prophet, as he stepped out the gate and slammed it and raised his hands in front of the Syrian army and said, Thus saith the Lord, let this entire army go blind. You know what he used? Something more powerful than all the armies of heaven. The spoken word of God. The very thing you're listening to tonight. Without firing a shot nor swinging a sword, he subdued an entire army just by speaking. Who are you looking for? Prophet by the name of uh, Elisha. We're going to cut off his head. Changed your mind? Nope. Learned a lesson? Nope. Can you take a hit? Nope. We got our orders from headquarters. We got to fill them out. Then hold hands. And they all held hands, and Elisha led them single handedly to the king of Israel. Great miracle. Oh, said the king, tell me all the great things that Elisha have ever done. <laughs> Glory to God. What am I going to. Oh, can I kill him? My father, my father, let me kill him, said the king of Israel. No! There's too many people now trying to kill everybody they say. Stomp everybody. Destroy everybody. Feed them and let them go. There's only one thing I can promise you here tonight. We're going to feed you and set you free. That's all I can tell you. Say so praise the Lord. And the bands of Syria never came back into Israel no more. See the wisdom? Until Israel sinned debauchedly. And then they can pass Samaria, the capital. Starvation set in. Fighting and devouring and cannibalism among the city. Oh, listen, city of God. No more biting and devouring and backbiting and cannibalism. Say amen. 
You know what got so bad? That not only were they devouring one another. Hello. Uh, hello. Ouch. Oh me. Oh my. How about amen? But they started eating corruption. They were feeding on a diet that was a stench in the nostrils of God. If you want food, dig out your ears. You're eating tonight. I know some of your stuff right now and you can't handle no more, but I'm almost through. I've yet many things to say unto you, said Jesus, but you cannot bear them now. But they were eating a mule's head, 40 shekels, or 20 shekels. Or was it 80 shekels? Neither here nor there. It was a huge price for a mule's head. Huh? Four score, that was 80. And for five shekels, they were eating a cab of dove's dung. But that's just how God feels when he sees what you've been feeding on. Come on here. When he sees upon that which your mind and spirit has been feeding, he feels like puking. Say amen. Why, if he come tonight, that some people have to dash home and beg God for one extra hour to get all the bottles out of the fridge and the packs off the shelf and the clothes out of the closet and the magazines off the rack. Say praise the Lord. Why, they wouldn't dare entertain Jesus in their house if he came knocking to visit. Uh, he wouldn't feel the least bit at home. And here's what people are feeding on. And even in the church, which is the city, it's the same way. Hallelujah. They have to pay great big salaries to gospel entertainers, religious professionals. That just a few weeks ago was out in Hollywood, uh, raising, you know what? Huh? And now they've got born again. Of course, we haven't had time to check out their fruits, which is the only proof of whether anybody is born again. Ouch. Double ouch. Uh, but now they're famous, so now they've changed their profession. And we have to pay through the nose for something that's not even genuine food. At their best, all they're going to do is entertain us. But I need to be fed. I can, I'm not here to be entertained. Say amen. You think I've got more to do than scratch backs and tickle ears? I sure do. Hallelujah. Wave your hand in victory. Say amen. And yet God sees these cabs of doves, dungs, and these mule heads, and everybody just paying through the nose high prices for something that's not even genuine food but a stench in his nostrils. Huh? I was coming down through Greensboro, North Carolina, and I saw one big famous quartet uh, that had a marquee billing outside a dance hall nightclub. They were performing there that night. Look out here. I better not say no more. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what's going on. There's famine in the city. When you have to eat that stuff and think you're uh, eating something, you're really in bad famine. And the devil's camped right outside the gate, sitting on everything that you need. And if it was up to you, you'd never leave. But four old lepers that didn't amount to much and everybody kicked out and wouldn't let them uh, mingle or socialize with them. Cast them outside and said, stay to yourself. Get on their feet one day and say, hey, we're hungry too. Leprosy being a type of sin, sin does separate, but from what? They said, we're not going in that city. They're worse off than we are. There are some people you couldn't get in the church because of some people that's in the church. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? We're all starved to death, but we'll take our chances with the Syrians. Let them go back in that place. And they got on their feet and they took a stand. And when that connotation meant they must have got straightened out. Because when they marched down against that Syrian camp, God caused the Syrians to hear a loud noise. And they all fled and left their garments and their clothes strewed along the way and all that food behind, the horses behind, the mules behind, the gold, the silver, the precious jewels and the fine linen and the pure raiment and everything else they needed behind. 
And those four lepers walked through the midst of that, on couth, on uh, welcome, uh, ostracized, hated, off scouring the earth, got to mingle among the best riches of the land. Hallelujah. And you know they had the right spirit. They said, listen, this is a day of good tidings, and we're going to do evil if we don't tell the rest of the city about this. We better go back and tell them that there's everything that belongs to their peace, everything that can deliver them from their captivity is right in this place. We better go back and get them. Hallelujah. We don't dare wait till morning. Some evil will befall us. That's the kind of spirit they had. They went back and told the city. Now, of course, nobody believed it in the city. The king said it's a trick. There's a trick to it. That preacher's got rabbits in the hat and uh, pigeons up his sleeve. Uh, now, the minute we go out there, they'll come storming in here and they'll have us surrounded. Oh, no, said the lepers, it's true. You may not. Jesus, if you go to hell, you put yourself there. He said, it's not that murderer outside the door. Lock the door. And he hollered through the keyhole again and said, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for shekel, two measures of barley for shekel. Hmm. Said the Lord on whose hand the king leaned. Don't believe it. Now, sometimes you can get the king to believe it, but you can't get that fellow that's trying to be a big shot to believe it. You know, that brown noser that's trying to get up tight with somebody important. You know what I mean? That influencer, that fellow that seeks to persuade the deputy from the faith, old Sergius, or, or by Jesus there, Elimus, who's going to go blind any moment, <laughs> say amen. <laughs> oh, said if I, you don't believe it, huh? If you don't believe it, you will see it, but you won't taste thereof. I am almost a brother Norse come and rescue me. I'm glad to have been here tonight. I know some of you shouters even has quieted down on this. This meal is almost too much for you. Hallelujah. But it still feels good to me. There's nothing, not a blessed thing going on in Tampa tonight right now. A lot going on, but it's not blessed. you got no place to go, nothing to do. You just might as well be here. And if you miss work tomorrow, I promise you, the sun will still rise. The world will still revolve. You will never be missed. You're not that important no more. Hallelujah. I know you got your plans. Postpone them temporarily. Hallelujah. Tonight, if you don't believe what's being preached, you'll see it, but you'll never taste it. Amen. I can see somebody dancing in the Spirit. That don't mean I'm going to dance in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory. The Bible didn't say to see. It said to taste and see. But the Lord is good. It's one thing to see the kingdom of God. It's another thing to enter into the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He said, Nicodemus, listen. Except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom. Father down, he said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he will not enter into the kingdom. Read it again, I challenge you. You can see the kingdom from now to doomsday, from beyond the great gulf. But are you going to enter in? We see then that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And I would not have you to forget, brother, how that after God delivered the people out of Egypt, he destroyed the same people he delivered. Why? Because of their unbelief. Say amen. Guess what happened the next day? In the stampede to get down to the Syrian camp to get food and to eat and drink, they stomped that Lord on whose hand the king leaned. They stomped him to death in the gate. Oh, he saw it all right, but he never lived to eat it. Say amen. Oh, I'm happy. Just in conclusion, Joram the king of Israel 
sits on his throne and remembers the good old days, the high old times, the grand spiritual years. Looking in his face is the ex-servant of the man of God, Elisha, scarred in white from his head to his feet with Naaman's leprosy. Things has reached a low keel when an old leper can walk in and talk to a king. Mixed company and weird association. But the king is overwhelmed. Oh, he said, as I'm reminiscing, Gehazi, tell me all the great things that Elisha have done. And Gehazi sat down and he could still preach. He preached the same message I preached tonight. Except he had Naaman's leprosy on him and his seed forever. And there were lepers in Jesus' day that he could not cleanse. But they were Gehazi's seed. You can't break the word of God. Chasing the chariot for clothes and money. Look out, brother. You want to chase the chariot? Then plan to run to win. Hallelujah. Are you listening close? As I wind this, I'm trying to tie this thing up for you tonight. I wish I could preach it the way I feel it. It would be a masterpiece. Tell me all the great things that Elijah have done. I've told you tonight every great thing Elijah have done. And he just got to the part of the sermon where he was talking about how Elijah had raised a great woman of Shuma's son back to life. But who should come pounding on the door and walking into the throne room boldly to grant her petition from the king but the Shunammite. She'd been gone for seven years. But now she was back in God's country. She left because she believed this prophet, the word of the Lord. Famine's coming for seven years. She said, bye-bye, I'll be back later. And when she came back, she came back to claim her rightful inheritance, her land, and her home again. Oh, God's timing. God's perfect timing. Now is the time for your miracle. It is God's perfect timing. Just when God comes down the long, long, long list of all revivals going on around the world tonight, and he comes to your name and your case, here you sit. Here's your moment. Say hallelujah. Woo! You may have been out of it for seven years. You may have been lost in Egypt, a type of the world, for ten years. You may have lost many years that the canker worm consumed and the power worm destroyed, the locusts and the caterpillar have eaten, but now it's restoration. I know a king that's going to give you back everything you ever lost. Hallelujah! Everything that was destroyed, everything that's missing in you, that vacuum will be filled. Your land will come back. Your home will come back. You don't have to live in a house. God can give you a home. Say praise the Lord. Oh, God, say am I. Woo, God's perfect timing. Oh, my Lord, said Gehazi, I can't believe it. God's still confirming my preaching. Strange, isn't it? Here's a woman. Woo-hoo. Glory. The king almost fell off his throne. He asked, are you sure you're that woman? I'm that woman, said that woman. Hallelujah. I'm here to get my home back. I'm here to get my land back. I'm here to get my health back. I'm here to get my needs met, my bills paid. I'm here for God to let me prosper and be in health just like my soul is going to prosper now. Say hallelujah. Well, God's perfect time, and this is your hour. If you believe, it's your moment. Shout a big amen. Hallelujah. to God. Oh, glory. My Lord, I love you. Woo would a God. That king give her back everything that's hers. Listen, I'm gonna come boldly myself onto the throne of grace tonight. Find grace to help in time of need. When I knock on the door and the angel sticks his head out and says, Who's there? I'm not gonna say, It's just me. It's just weak little old me. It's just mealy mouth little old me. Good for nothing, useless. Never mind anything, little old me. No, no, I can't say that. I got the angel. Step aside. It's a son of God. Get out of my way. I'm going right into the throne room. I'm going to touch that very throne. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, give me back my strength. 
Lord, give me back my land. Lord, give me back my job. Lord, give me back my health. Take these old afflictions. I've been gone too long. I've lived in Egypt too far away. And now I'm back because you see the famines of that. And he'll not only do it tonight, but when I get back to earth on that white horse with him pretty soon and the millennial reign of Christ sets up for a thousand years of peace, he's going to sit me on another throne. He's going to let me be ruled over another land. He's going to give me another home, a mansion in the New Jerusalem and a, a brand new uh, hacienda ranch down here. I don't know how much he's going to let me rule the lot of iron and break them as a pot of wood of that sort of shippers. But we shall rule and reign upon this earth of Christ. Yes, we may be gone for a while, but when we come back, there's a king that's going to restore this whole wide world unto the saints of the Most High. The meek shall inherit the earth, the pure in spirit to see God. Oh, glory. The perfect in heart are going to rule this world. It's all going to be ours. Are you ready for a big comeback? I'm going to make a comeback tonight. Hallelujah. Put your hand up. If you've enjoyed all the great things that Elijah did, you will enjoy all the great things that Jesus Christ will do. And he will do them even now. Hallelujah to God. Thank God. Thank God. We have won. And for spirituality in the lives of those who lack it. Nobody knows it any better than you do. You feel like you've been gone too long. You've lost too much while you've been gone from home. Your real home. You want to come back tonight? God will give you back everything you lost while you've been backslid. God will give you back everything you lost while you have been adrift. While you have gone elsewhere to seek your fortune. Maybe you had good reason for leaving like the great woman of Shuma did, but that's under the bridge now. It's time to come back. And if you want your land and home restored to you, come back. Only ask this king of kings, and he will give it to you tonight. But you've got to come to him first. I'm praying for everyone who wants their soul prayed for. You've been gone down into Egypt, which is the type of the world. You've been gone too long. But now you're coming home. And you want what you lost to be given back to you again. If this is you, you even think it's you in the least. You feel the faintest tug on your heart string now. I'm not going to scare you. I'm not going to beg nor plead with you. I appeal to your intelligence. If you've got a brain in your head, that's what I'm appealing to. If you have any understanding, you want to come home to the Father's house. If you want him to restore it all back to you again that you've lost while you've been away, the prayers for your soul, you feel you need this in the slightest, Stand now. Stand now. Stand all over this place now. Get to your feet for I come after you. That's just how I am. I stand here in the Holy Ghost. I tell, I can tell who needs to get saved and who does not need to get saved here tonight. I'm not bragging. I just know when I'm in the Holy Ghost. Say amen. You be one step off the path, be the same as a million miles. You get a doubt in your heart, it'll keep you out. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin, and there will be no sin that goes through the gates. There's a few more that need to stand for prayer for the soul. Hallelujah be to God. Quickly rise, quickly rise. Now, there are some that are standing that's been saved before, they're just making sure. There's some that's still sitting that's bound with many chains that holds them in the chair. Some of you that's still in your chair are the real ones that should be on your feet right now. I'm going to pray that God will heal and perform miracles, but God don't care if he never does that tonight compared to his desire for a lost soul. Say amen. Hallelujah to God. Everyone that needs prayer for the soul, rise now in Jesus' name. Now. This is just the first prayer. I see that there are more prayers that will have to be prayed. But I'm willing to pray them. I promised God 15 years ago I'd drop dead if I'd ever back up from the devil again. I still mean it. He's still been proving me on it, but he's never failed me on it yet. Still kicking, still living. 
You just got your hands up. Pray with me this prayer of a loud voice. Let God hear you. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart again. Wash me in the blood once more. Cleanse me from all iniquity, from all short-sightedness, from all failures. Lift my condemnation. Loose me now from conviction. Let me feel a cleansing, a washing, a cleansing. Now I believe you're hearing me. There is a new peace and joy. A new satisfaction entering in. Something clean and holy burns in my heart. This is Jesus, the beginning of my salvation. I've made a new start for heaven tonight. I'm his property now. He has loosed my bands. He has freed my habits. He is going to let me walk with him. He's going to help me not to fall, to endure on to the end, for that man shall be saved. Now I thank you for salvation, rich and free. I'm your property. Take care of me. In Jesus' name, everybody worship now.